Hallelujah. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that had a clean hands and a pure heart. Thank you. There's a lot of us, we want to be used by God, but we're really not ready to be used by God. And everything that God uses and everybody that he uses, he first prepared them. Did not he prepare John the Baptist? Did not he prepare Isaiah? Jeremiah? Did not he prepare Daniel? Did not he prepare David? Hallelujah. Thank you. You don't want to put a soldier on the front line who don't have on your same type of uniform. If God is looking for soldiers, he can put on the front line. Hallelujah. He don't judge us like men judge us by size and height. Thank you. I know I'm talking a little bit, but I'm just trying to get where I need to be. Amen. When you were younger, you were going to uh, Six Flags. They said you got to be this tall to ride on this ride. How many know about that? And, and they'll watch you. You can you can try to tiptoe if you want to. They're looking at you from your head to your foot to make sure you don't cheat. Hallelujah. And you can't cheat your way into a position to be used by God. You can't get you a master's or a doctorate in theology and think that is enough to be used by God. You can't join, amen, the mega church and think that's your door opener. Hallelujah. Because God needs somebody to go into the crevices of life. Hallelujah. He needs somebody that want to go, got a desire to go to the crack addicts. The God chasers. And, and, and everybody that sprung out on drugs and if never been strung out on drugs, you may not be able to relate to what I'm saying, but every drug addict is a God chaser. Every drug addict that I've ever known and everyone that ever did drugs were God chasers. Ask me why you said it. Because the first time you get high, you come in contact with a dimension that you're not familiar with. And in that dimension, you said, God dwells here. And you spend your next high trying to get back to that first high where you were closest to God. I'm trying to hit me out. They are really God chasers. Amen. And so they have to do more and more drugs to get to that high that they had the first. So they start out as God chasers, then they become high chasers. And then they get to a point to where their body is addicted to it doesn't matter whether they see God or not. Now they're trying to relieve the pain and the anxiety that comes with doing drugs. But they started out as God chasers. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. And if you would study the effects of drugs, I don't know why I'm talking about this so early. The effects that drugs have on the mind, it puts them in a state where they're in contact with every molecule that is in the universe. And they feel as if though they can touch God. Thank you. They have been God chasers to the point to where, amen, their whole life is centered around trying to get to a place. That's why they don't care what they look like, what they smell like, because they have experienced a reality that it doesn't matter what you dress like, what you smell like, how many teeth are in your mouth. They have gone to a place where they were able and their minds felt like they was touching another dimension. The drugs will put you in another dimension. Thank you. And I can tell you about it because I once was chasing God that same way. Amen. So I was a God chaser trying to get high. Hallelujah. Trying to get a different reality about life. Thank you. And I learned that 
I chased him for a while in that direction. And one thing about when you're doing drugs, when you are high, you got to come down. And you will never achieve the same high that you had initially. It always dissipates and you always got to go harder to the pain to get back where you were. I'm trying to help somebody understand the big shoot. Hallelujah. Then I became a God chaser for real. Hallelujah. And I still get high. Oh, give me a hit today. I, I get high on the joy, the wisdom, the knowledge, the power, the deliverance, the holiness of God. And it's a high like I've never had in the world. And, and unlike, unlike the world high, you got to spend money to get it, to get where you desire to go. And it may not be the same high that it was the last time you spent your money. It could be a bad high. But being a real God chaser, every time I think about Jesus, every time I get in his presence, I get high again. I get a joy down in my soul. I feel so destroyed with you right now. Thank you.
up, so give God to do it. Don't get mama, don't get dad, don't get your boots, don't get your boots. relationships are going to end up but indeed we put our trust thank you I want to speak to those who are in the process of growing it is very uncomfortable come on up son young man come on up Marshall you come on up a little closer in the back yeah you you come on up bring him on up here one of these front rows if you have to I don't care bring him on up here Y'all bear with me on today. Second row, second row. I need you to create in me a clean heart and make me who you have me to be. So if you're uncomfortable who you are in Christ, just stick around. Just stay with them. Just hold on to them. Hallelujah. Excellent. If you're uncomfortable who you are in Christ, because when you don't spend time in church, this is an uncomfortable place to be. Because folk looking at you, you think you're standing out. You don't want to praise God because you think you're cuter than reality. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Ryan, won't you? For the wrong reasons. See, that's why this ain't this, this. This is not this kind of a house. You don't. This is a place where you open up your minds and your spirit. So that God can pour in. And anytime something is poured into a cup and it gets full, something runs over. Right? And whatever is the heaviest goes to the bottom. And whatever is on top runs over. What I want you to see today that God love is going to be poured into your life. And when all of you is ran out of your cup. You will have a true praise. You will have a true mercy. You will have true joy. So I ask you, God, to come into this house on today. Do what you need to do to these, your people. I am only the voice that speaks on your behalf. But you're the one that loves their souls. When they're right or when they're wrong, it doesn't change your love. We tell you thank you today, God. Hallelujah. Because you are, and he says, so faithful. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. God bless you. Hallelujah. Clap your hands if you love him today. I said if you love him, not like him, clap your hands if you love him today. If you put in the 
expecting anything from the mighty God. Can you just stand up on your feet and give God some praise with your mouth? We're going to praise him, but can we praise him with our mouth? Come on, open up your mouth and just begin to learn God. God, I love you. God, I'll serve you forever. God, I appreciate you. I thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace, for your mighty hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Come on, open up your mouth and just begin to give him glory in this place. We're going to sing, we're going to dance, but God is waiting on somebody to open up your mouth and just send up a sound of praise to him. Come on, come on, come on. Give it to him today, give it to him. He's the mighty God. Yes, yes, give it to him. Hallelujah, worship him in this place on today. God, we need you. We're here part of an expectancy. Waiting on you to move, waiting on you to heal, waiting on you to deliver. You're the only one that can do it. You're the only one that can save me. You're the only one that can make me whole. You're mighty, you're great. Mighty are the works of your hands. Worship, worship. Mighty God, you are. Mighty God. 
what a mighty God. Oh, what a mighty God. We serve. What a mighty God. If you believe it, can you just sing that right now?
measure of faith to faith. We're added and we're believing God for greater. Amen. We're believing God. Our faith is increasing and not decreasing. I'm not going to let my troubles make me to think that God is not working on my behalf. My faith, prophesize to yourself, my faith is on the increase. Say it again. My faith is on the increase. So you can't worry about what it looked like, what kind of troubles I got in my life. You can't, that has nothing to do with my faith. It is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So you can't look around my life. You can't look at what's going on to determine whether or not God is not working in my favor. Because I believe God for the impossible. Because it was impossible for you to be saved. Hallelujah. But the God of all impossibilities made a way. Thank you. When your back was against the wall. And it looked like it was all over. Tell somebody God made a way. We'll continue in a story pertaining to David, how out of his trials and tribulations that Saul convinced him he was better off away from the people of God, from the high priests and those that served the Lord. At one time, at one time, David was such an anointed singer that at one time, David had over 4,000 people in his choir. 4,000 that were singing. And, and they weren't just making a whole lot of noise. I, I, I seen a person that had a hundred member choir, but they all sounded alike. <laughs> but he had over 4,000 people singing in the choir. And, and they were singing. They weren't playing with it. They were skillful. David was a skillful musician. And he had a lot of people that wanted to be a part of giving God the praise. Convinced that the king Saul wanted him to the point where David was willing to give up his prophetic future. Yeah. There is a prophetic future over all of our lives. Yeah. And the devil does not really know all it entails. But he knows because you are here today yeah. that God has a plan for your life. And by you being in church anywhere, his plan is to stop God's plan from being manifested to you. He don't want you to see it. He don't want you to believe it. He wants you to think that you need to settle right in the midst of your situation. Because somebody tells him, whatever you do, don't settle. It gets better. It gets better. Relationships will get better. Your finances will get better. Just don't settle. And he made up in his mind, amen, for about 15 to 20 years he had been running from King Saul. And he made up in his mind, I'm going to fix my own problem. Have you ever been there? Didn't wait on God. But you say, I'm going to take care of this. I'm I'm, I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to take care of him because God has not moved yet. So I'm going to fix my own problem. David, knowing who he was, a man after God's own heart. And when we study the life of David, uh, as our ministers and trainers are dealing with uh, Jesus as the son of David, we see David portray more of the attributes of Christ than any other leader. All right. His kindness and his mercy yes. and his willingness his compassion yeah. exceed all of the kings yeah. amen that came after him there was no king like king david amen. Amen. david had some heart trials and tribulations yeah. and he wasn't always right that's you know, like you, you're not always holy. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Your thoughts are not always holy. And everything that, that come out of your mouth is not tied into a thank you, Jesus. Amen, somebody. He was a M-A-N. He was subject to sin, just like all of us. Thank you. 
So don't put nobody on a pedestal to make them feel as if though you got it going on. It's impossible for you to fall. Oh, no, no, no. Every disciple that Jesus had failed him at one time or another. Misinterpret him at one time or another. Could not understand his purpose or his plan for humanity at one time or another. Every one of them. So there'll be times in your life where you don't understand just what God is doing. But he's well aware of how to orchestrate your life and how to put you in a divine position where you can get just what you deserve from him. 15 to 20 years of the same man on my back. Hallelujah. The same man trying to kill me. And then I had him cornered and then he repented, but I know it's not over. You ever had somebody tell a lie on you and you catch them, you say they won't do it again. Next week they lie on you again. Y'all ever experienced that? You watch them, they stole for you once. I know they ain't gonna steal from me again because I caught them that. Keep on watching them. You gonna miss it because they will steal from you again. And David was in a backsliding state. It's not that God was not married to him, but his actions and his attitude did not show that he was really God's anointed. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody right now. Yeah. When your actions, attitude does not line up to you being a child of God, somebody is being misled yeah. by you. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are supposed to Behold the righteous. We're supposed to look on those who are upright. So when you're no longer walking and loving like you should, you are misleading some people. And David was misleading some people. And he had about 600 men. And all of the 600 soldiers that were with him and their family were not godly men. There were some who just wanted the spoils of war. And David was so victorious, you're going to always get some spoils if you hang around David. You're going to always come on the winning end of the battle if you hang around David. And he had sold himself out. Amen. We talked about last week how he ended up in Gath, the home of the Philistine. He had to look at people who were saying, that's that man that killed my cousin Goliath. That's that man that killed my nephew Goliath walking around in the city. You know, and we can't put a hand on him because the king has told us, don't bother him. He's with me. And he had convinced uh, uh, the king of the Philistine, what was his name, had convinced him that he was on his side. I'm locked in on you. I'm tired of being a church personality. I'm tired of serving God. Amen. I'm going to serve the princess of the Philistine, who is the enemies of Israel. And he had convinced Asia that I'm with you. He had been living in Ziklag for over a year now. The king was convinced that David is on our side. And he wanted to take David into battle. And let's look at the, uh, uh, the, the 29th chapter. And let's look at the, start at the 6th verse. 6th verse, 29 of First Samuel. 29 of 1 Samuel. And let's read it. 29 and 6. Then, is it Akish? Am I saying that right? Scholars. Then Achish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, and thou going out and thy coming in with me, with me in the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me until this day. Nevertheless, the Lord favor thee not. What are you reading at? What verse? That was the sixth verse. Of 30, read 6 and 30. 30 of chapter, verse 6. 30 of chapter, verse 6. And David was greatly distressed 
For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. How did David get yes. to this place yes. where he had lost everything that he had? You may be seated. David was preparing to go to battle with the Philistines against the children of Israel. Yes. Yes. The king said, David is my best warrior. He's my best fighter. Don't let his 600 make you feel as if though David cannot give us this victory. David was more than capable of giving the victory to the Philistine. Amen. Amen. The sixth verse said, and our chain call of the 29th verse, uh, called David and said unto him, Surely, as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, and thou going out, and thou coming in with me, and the host of is good in my sight. For I am not found evil in thee since the day uh, thy coming unto me, even unto now. You, you got favor in my eyes. Wherefore, the seventh verse of that, read that for me. Now, 29 and 7. 29 and 7. 29 and 7. Wherefore, Wherefore now return and go in peace, that thou displease not the lords of the Philistines. So the Philistines, all the kings had got together and it was going through the ranks to see who's going into battle with them. And they said, what is this Hebrew? What, what, what a thing going in to battle with us. We trust David. We, we cannot trust David. And, 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 and they was trying to figure out what has he done? No, David hasn't done anything. But David tells him in the seventh verse, wherefore now return and go in peace. That thou what? This please not, please not the, Lord the lords of the, the Philistines. Philistine. And David said what? The eighth verse. And David said unto Akish, but what have I done? Why well, I can't go to the party with you? <laughs> what have I done? Yeah, Read on. And what hast thou found in thy servant so long as I have been with thee until this day? I've been fighting, bringing you the spoils. What, why can't I go with you? Read on. That I may not go fight against the enemies of my lord the king. Next verse. And Akish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight as an angel of God. Notwithstanding the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. So this is what I want you to do, David. The 10th verse said what? Wherefore? Wherefore now rise up early in the morning with thy master's servant that thou that are come with thee. And as soon as ye be up early in the morning and have light, depart. We got to get you away from here. Now you got to understand that the Philistine was preparing to fight Saul yes. in the children of Israel. Yes. In that particular battle, Saul would lose his life yes. and his son's life would be lost also. Yes. So David was going to go and fight against his own people. Amen. Because he was in a black backslidden state. Yes. And he was agreed, I'm going to go kill my folk. Yes. He left the church. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why is that when people leave the church, they always trying to kill folk that's left in the church? Yes. Why is it that when people leave the church, they still scroll in the church? They keep up with everything that's going on wrong. Why, why when people leave the church, they still talking about the church? Why they got to keep telling you I ain't never coming back? Well, why you keep scrolling us? Then I break up with you? Why you keep scrolling my Facebook page? So we got David, he leaving, he done left the church, but now he finna go kill the church. He could have went and did battle with somebody else. But he was more concerned about killing those that I left in Jerusalem than he was 
about anything else. Yeah. And it broke his heart. Yeah. He was hurt because the prince of the Philistines could not allow him to go into battle because of who he was. Why are we taking this man into battle that they're still singing Saul has killed his thousand and David his ten thousand. Why are we taking him with us? Can we trust him? Can we trust him to fight with us or will he turn against us in the midst of the battle and get, they had a right to be nervous. And and when I, when I read this particular uh, a lesson, I found out how God Prevented David from making a bigger mistake. Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you. Yes. Because when you're in a backslidden state, you go make mistakes. That's right. But I see the mercy of God using the king in the Philistines yes. to turn David back because he's not going to fight in this battle. Yes. This is a, a sign of God's mercy that was beginning to work on David's behalf. Even though David did not like how God was doing it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He, he was hurt by the fact that he couldn't go into battle because he was a warrior. He did not like the way God did it. He was very displeased. He couldn't yeah. figure it out. God was saying, before you have a baby by him, y'all yeah. got to walk with me. I'm going to cause y'all to break up now. Yeah. But you had a mistake. You made one mistake dealing with June Bug. Yeah. You shouldn't have got involved with Mary Sue. If I don't allow her former to come into the midst of your relationship, you're going to go deeper than you need to go. So I'm going to cause you to break up with her or cause her to break up with you. I'm going to keep you from making a bigger mistake. Oh, won't God, won't God do it, won't it? You, you know you're the messed up. Amen. Hallelujah. You know you have messed up. But God said, I'm not going to let you make a bigger mistake. Yeah. David, you don't forgot. I anointed you to be king. Woo. And I can't let you make the mistake of going to destroy those that you are going to be Lord over. David had really forgot about. He had forgot about his calling, his purpose, and his anointing. And all of you who are anybody in Christ at one time forgot about your spiritual destiny. He had forgot all about that. He was mad because he could not do what he wanted to do. But God said, I'm going to look out for the nut. I'm going to look out for that man that's walking out of my will. I, I thank God so many times he looked out for us. Because you ain't got sense enough to read the right on the wall. You know you had no business being where you were. How many of you have experienced you were supposed to go to the club but they didn't come pick you up? But when they got to the club, there was a shootout. And somebody that you knew got shot. And you was glad that you didn't go. You, because you was headlong on going, you was mad with them, but they probably saved your life. In other words, God has a way of always looking out for you because you are not smart enough. You don't have the insight to make the right decision. Come on, God. And that's how the mercies of God works. You can't make no decision on your own, so God said, I'm going to make one for you, David. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I'm not going to let you make that mistake. I'll let you wander. I'll let you go astray. But now, David, we got to start turning you around. You've gone too far. And, and one of the things I want to say about David, on last week I told you he hadn't hit rock bottom yet. But now we're going to find David getting to a place where he has no other choice but to look up. Amen. When God has called you even as a child and you try to run from your calling and try to run from who you are in God, God will allow you to hit rock bottom yes. so you can look up. Because if you're on the bottom, there's nowhere to look but up. Anybody ever been there before? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
David was hurt. He was upset. God had spared him with his mercy from fighting against his own people and told him to go back to Ziklag. David on his way back to Ziklag. Amen. And he going there, him and his men, they was always upset because they wanted to get to fight in the battle. But they began to say, well, at least we will be going home. Yeah. We'll go home. We'll be able to spend some time with our wives and our children. We'll be able to have us a home-cooked meal. And I'd be glad to see my kids and tell them all about what we've been going through on the battlefield and, and everything. So this, this, they was about 75 miles away from this home in Ziggler. That's a three days journey because they was doing 25 miles per day. And they was mad because they couldn't fight. But then going home is not going to be such a bad thing. Their spirit began to become a little bit more lifted. Amen. Because they was headed home. But something happened. Yeah. On their way going home, they noticed a smoke that was coming up from the city. Yeah. It was close enough to the city to see the smoke coming up. Yeah. And they said, that's not fried chicken smoke. <laughs> they ain't burning firewood. <laughs> They've been traveling for three days in a row and they see Somebody has set our city on fire. Who in the world has come and set our city on fire? David, amen, and his man began to rush down to the city and discovered it was a ghost town. Their wives, their children, all their camel, their sofa. Their chairs. They had packed up everything that the people owned, all of their clothes. They had packed it up and had taken it with them because they had a plan. While David and the Philistine was fighting, amen, they were going through, I think it was the Amalekites, they were going through raiding the cities that was left vacant. And on their way of coming down from the south, they came through Ziklag and they got all of the city that didn't have soldiers. And David's wives and all of their children were taken captive by the Amalekites. Is that right? And the Bible said they did not take their lives. Instead of David and the 600 men coming back home trying to find refuge and peace and rest. And everybody go. Yeah, and the Bible says that David and all of his men begin to cry. Yeah. They begin to weep bitterly because everything that they owned was gone. Yeah. They did not expect to see their wives or their children again. That was a very depressing time yeah. for soldiers to be crying like babies. Yeah. And while they were crying, they started picking up rocks. The Bible said they start picking up stones. Yeah. Looking at David like. <laughs> You got me in this situation. This rock got your name on it, David. We don't care who you say you are. But because you have called us to lose everything that we have, we are going to take your life. At that particular moment, David had wrote a song for the Lord in over a year. At that particular moment, David recognized, I'm in a bad place. I've never been where I am before in my life. My wife and children are gone, and they're talking about killing me. They won't let me fight in the battle. I've lost everything. I have no recourse. But to turn to the Lord. I have no other choice. Thank you. Oh, yes, he had a choice. He could have said, bring me a bottle of the strongest wine. And let me drink all my sorrows 
Let me get drunk before y'all kill me. Bring me the pipe and let me smoke some opium. So I won't be able to feel the blows of the rocks. But David had a reality check about his life. It can't get any worse than this. Then this man that 20 years ago was the champion of Israel recognized there still may be a possibility that God would hear me. Thank you. If I were to tell you 10 years from now, you'll be a prostitute. <laughs> and you're in the church today. You're on the praise team. You're singing in the choir. You, you're on the, and I said 10 years from now, man, you done lost your mind. You could not have told David 15 to 20 years from now, you'll be willing to fight against your own people. David said, man, I just killed the Philistine. You're going to tell me, you're going to prophesy to me. My future is to fight with him again. You done lost your mind. You never know what you're going to face in life. So never say, I'll never. I'll never do this and I'll never do that. Never say, I'll never, because you don't never know what life will put you when never becomes your reality. And what you say you would never do. When you're in a backslidden state, there's, there's, there's no such thing as never. Hallelujah, somebody. David said, I have nowhere to go but to God because you all are going to kill me. So he had an eye awakening moment. And the Bible said that and David encouraged himself in the Lord. In order to encourage yourself, you first got to repent. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He, he got away from the people. He, he called for the high priest to bring him, amen, the ephod, so that he could pray and communicate with God in privacy. He encouraged himself. He did not call for the priest to pray. See, sometimes you want to call for the pastor. I'm going through it. But if God has ever touched you at any time in your life, you has accepted him as Lord and Savior, you can encourage yourself. You ain't always got to have the prophet or the prophetess to give you a word about who you are. You ought to be able to sometimes encourage yourself. Because to be honest with you, sometimes people don't know what to say on your behalf. Because everything that David said before the Lord as he repented, it came from his heart. What I may say for you to encourage you may come from my mind, not always my spirit. But the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. He, he remembered the power that God had. And he was determined, I messed up enough that I won't make another mistake without consulting God. You messed up with your last boo. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And you finna do it again without consulting God. You messed up on your last job. You walked off and left because they said they're hiring somewhere else. And they told you if you just go fill out the application, you'll get the job. I've already talked to the man. You get that position already filled. You should have prayed and asked God, should I go or should I stay? When we make any decisions in life, we need to learn how to seek the Lord for the answer. We need to seek God to order our steps because we miss benefits and blessings when you react based upon what you see. Somebody tell the Lord thank you right now. We're not going to be here too long today. This is part two of message continuation from last Sunday. David encouraged who? He wasn't worried about the other men. See, it ain't time for you to be concentrating on getting everybody else strong. Sometimes you got to concentrate on encouraging yourself. Because my memory of God is not the same as your remembrance of God. I can't encourage God better.
based upon how you remember him. I have to encourage him on how he's dealt with me in my life. How he has been there for me in my life. How he allowed me to go through and come out. I have to encourage God from my personal experience. And you can't help me with that. You cannot help me repent before the Lord. Because I have to repent before the Lord based upon my own sins and transgressions. You can't help me repent. Thank you, Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And when he was at the very bottom. Hallelujah. You got on one hand Saul who could not hear from God. God told him, I've taken the kingdom away from you. Saul going to the witches of Endor trying to get a word from God. He could not get a word from God because God had rejected him, but God never rejected David. And before you hit rock bottom, I want you to know today that God has never rejected you. Called by my name while humble themselves and pray and turn from that wicked way. Hallelujah, somebody. All you got to do who have backslidden, who have been out of church, who have lost your rhythm of church, is repent and God will give you the strength to go forward. He will talk to you just like he was talking to you when you was on fire for God. David was on fire for the Lord. He was writing a song almost every day. Thank you. Now he, he, he ain't on fire from God, for God. He, he's trying to get back to that place. And one prayer. Oh, God. Let me hear you say one prayer. One prayer to God about restoration. Hallelujah. God was waiting on David to get to that place where he would come back to him in the fullness. Let me hear you say just one prayer. If you, if you pray it right the first time, God will give you a peace to let you know that I heard your cry. Thank you, Jesus. One prayer. David said, God, I know I have messed up. And I don't want to go no farther without you. Yeah. They trying to kill me here, God. Yeah. You see them? Yeah. They picking choice rocks, right. choice stones up. Yeah. They mad with me, Jesus. Right. They trying to take my life. Amen. But I want to know from you, yeah. where should I go yeah. from here? Yeah. Ask yourself, say, God, where should I go from here? Yeah. Ask yourself, say, where, where shall I go? from here. And in David's backslidden state, he still recognized the voice of God. Because when you repent, the God that you had fellowship with, you never forget his voice. Even when you're in your deepest dirt, you can still hear God speaking to and David repented before the Lord and told the Lord, I want to know they got everything, they've taken everything from me. Should I pursue? Right. Or should I just let the enemy have that? Right. And God spoke to him and said, what? Pursue. pursue. Yes. You shall. Yes. You shall recover it all. Thank you. This is parallel to Jesus. Because Jesus pursued the cross. And he gave us the promise that Adam had in the beginning. Everything that sinful men had lost out on, Jesus himself recovered it all. The joy, the peace, the understanding. Jesus recovered it all on the cross. All power in heaven and earth is in my He recovered everything. Our relationship that we had with God before the fall of man, Jesus recovered it. 
Oh, y'all ought to be saying something right there. And, and he told him to pursue, you shall recover everything. You remember that little what not stand that you had in your living room? It's that waiting on you, David. You remember, you remember your famous chair you like to sit in from the back? It's waiting on you, David. The little simple things, the little simple joys, the little simple pleasures, amen, that you received in this life. David, you're going to recover everything because I will be with you. I'm going to make sure that you get everything that the enemy has taken away from you. You shall recover. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're not in Christ like you should be, I'm talking especially to you. That God is trying to get your mind to a place where you recognize you need him more than he needs you. And if you repent before the Lord, God will give you a type of restoration in your mind and your spirit. You will know his voice because you were his sheep and you still his sheep. And he said, my sheep know my voice. Thank you. So when you're living in sin and you're supposed to be a child of God and you gave your life to Christ at any time, you still know his voice. Thank you. When you are high, you know God is telling you, you know, you don't need to be doing that. When you drunk, God is telling you, you know, this is not who you are. See, that ain't you talking, that's God talking. How many heard his voice like that? You know you have no business being with him. You know you have no business being with her. What are you doing in this place? And you still hear his voice. Hallelujah. And he reminds you of who you're supposed to be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And David heard his voice say, you need to go in pursuit because by my sweat you will recover everything that the devil stole from you. And David, I can see David getting up and he had spent some time with God and praying and he looked at the man with them stones, with them rocks and he said, look at here man. I just had a talk with God. He told us to pursue. We shall recover everything. Y'all with me? It's been several years since they heard David talk about what thus said the Lord. And now David is saying, I had a conversation with God. He told me to go get it. Listen. He did not tell the other 600. Don't y'all miss me now. He told me. He told me the pastor. He told me the bishop. I want to know y'all going with me. <laughs> David had a conversation with God. God told him he didn't tell the 600. But they had enough confidence in David. To believe even though we have lost it all because of David. Yeah. That God told David. And I believe the God that David is talking to. Yeah. Who has shielded us several times. Yeah. As Saul has tried to take our life. Yeah. God has always made a way. He hid us on one side of the mountain. While Saul was on the other side. And David said that God has told me to go. Yeah. Thank you. 600 men began to get up. Yeah. And they said, David, you say, God, we with you now. We with you. Yeah. We with you. We, gonna, we, we, we are with you. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. And David went after yes, he did. what the enemy yeah. had taken from him. Yeah. And they went after it with all their heart, yeah. with all their strength. Yeah. God said, you shall find me when you search for me with your whole heart 
you can't find God just by coming to church. He said, you shall find me when you search for me with your whole heart. And David's whole heart was in pursuit of that that God had promised him he would receive. My whole heart is in pursuit of everlasting life. My whole heart is in pursuit of joy. My whole heart is in pursuit of the peace of God that passes all understanding. My whole heart is in pursuit of miracles. Thank you, Jesus. What is your whole heart concerned about? What is your whole heart concerned about? And David went after them, galloping through the desert, looking for his wife, for his children, looking for his stuff. And he came across an Egyptian who had been abandoned in the desert. He was a servant of the Amalekites. And they left him because he had got sick. Said, well, we're going to leave you. Because you're slowing us down. We can't. We got a destination we got to go to. And David, even though they was rushing, they was running to recover what God had for them. They came across a man that had been abandoned by those that they was looking for. Did not know this. But David had compassion. David stopped the 600. Amen. From, from, from their single ministry, we need to minister to this man right here. What about pursuing for our children? Come on now. What about our wife? David said, see the Lord, when, when God gets to deal with you, he gets you doing stuff that other folk don't understand. They got my wife, my children, my grandchildren, they got my cattle, they got all my friends. And you talking about stopping for a man that look like he finna drop dead in the desert. He walking like this and, and they said, hold up, don't pass by. See him, he said, something is telling me to stop. Right. Amen. Even though we're on a mission, yes. but the God in me is having compassion yeah. on a man that's about to die. Yeah. And you know, David ain't afraid of killing. Right. He, it doesn't fear him to kill anybody. Amen. He went out when he was with Ziklag and killed a whole, uh, several times he killed a whole a city of people. Yes. Yes. Male, female, True. babies. Yes. If you read it, David and them, they ran the sword through the babies. You talk about what's going on in Israel and Hamas, that's nothing new. They was killing babies in the biblical times. Amen, somebody. And David said, the Lord is dealing with me to have compassion on this man. And he got it. Man had had nothing to eat or drink in three days. David said, "Give him some water. Give him some some bread, and give him a cake of raisins, and and, and, and let's refresh him." And, and and when the man got strong, David began to interrogate him. <laughs> David began to ask him, "Say, uh, uh, tell me, tell me, who are you?" <laughs> tell somebody you got to ask the right question. He ready to talk. Because he'd already been through torture for three days. No food, no water. And David was the good cop. Tell us, who are you? I'm an Egyptian. And my masters left me here because I got sick. And they told me I was holding them down. And they left me here to die. And they began to describe to him who he's looking for. Oh, he said, oh yeah. I know who you're looking for. I, I know where they at. I'm aware of who you're looking for and I know where they are. Though. I'm going to show you where the crooks are that stole all your stuff. But you can't tell me with me. That was a good snitch. You can't tell me it was me and you can't let them know who told you but I'm going to show you where they got your stuff. See, if David had not had compassion so what I'm trying to tell you why are you 
run into your blessings. Sometimes you need to look to your left and right and see if there ain't anybody you can help while you're proceeding to process your truth. Don't never be so headstrong on this getting what you got to get from God so you can't recognize there may be somebody that you can help along the way who can help you get there faster. And when you have compassion and help somebody, God will return to you a great blessing. And setting up camp so when we come back, the camp will already be set up. Are y'all with me? So he left 200 back. Thank the Lord, somebody. And he had only 400 men now. Going against several thousand. You do the numbers. But God always has a plan. And when David came up on the camp, things are starting to look better and better. What did he find? Y'all been reading it, talk to me. They were drinking. They were dancing. We got David stuff. We got the feel of sign stuff. We gonna have a party tonight. Yeah. And they were drinking. Yeah. And they were dancing. Oh, they done got weak. They done got drunk. They... And David said, look at them. Y'all see them? We ain't gonna bother them tonight. We gonna wait. We're going to catch them in the morning yeah. while they got that drunk headache. Yeah. You can't fight with a drunk headache. I don't care. I don't care how good a soldier you are. You, you drunk, they talk about the sun is rising. Come on, let's go fight my fight. Yeah. And the Bible said that David went through he and 400 men All right. and slew every one of them. Hallelujah. Who that preacher with me? Is that pastor? Yeah. Cut him off, God. I heard what you said. Thank you. You know, you know, when you're going through what you're going through, 
Every time you give God a praise in church, you call the devil on God. Amen. Come on, just say thank you, Jesus, right now. You call him off God because he was looking at you to say. David called him off God. And he took all of his stuff. Not just his stuff. But he took all of the men's stuff. He took all of their children, everything that they had. He took it. And now he had it back to the brook. And the 200 that didn't make it were looking. They were not looking at 400 people. They're looking at a caravan. Wagons. Did they have trains then? Wagons. Loaded up with things that belong to them. Let me hear you say plus. Plus everything that the Amalekites had stole from everybody else. The Bible said that became David's spot. David, we we gonna get what belonged to us, but all this other stuff that you have got that belonged to you, David. I'm just I'm just about finished. And so the 200, the 400, some of them had a problem. We ain't giving them nothing. They didn't go to battle with us. Now they got their hands out. We gonna give them their wives, their children, and tell them to see you later. You didn't come to church? We ain't giving you a piece of fried fish at the picnic. Ain't you glad it won't operate like that? Some of David men said we ain't giving them nothing. They ain't did nothing. They didn't go into battle with us. Hallelujah. Why we got to pay them for staying back here in the real. Yeah. Oh, David said, oh, no. no. Oh, no, we don't operate like that. That's right. we, we don't operate like that. We're we going to give them their spars also. We're going to give them what they would have got if they would have came. In other words, you don't have to be a preacher to get eternal life. You don't have to be a prophet or a prophetess to get the reward of the righteous. All you got to do is be on the Lord's side. You don't have to have a big handle on your name. You don't have to be a missionary, deacon, deacon. You don't have to be any of that. If you're the usher on the door, you're holding up the rear for us. And God's going to give every man a penny a day. He's going to give you everlasting life if you only work for one hour. Hallelujah, somebody. And David said, we're going to give them exactly what they deserve. We're going to break them off just as if though they was in the battle because if they could have been. In other words, if you was called a preacher, if you was called a pastor, you would be in that position. But because you was not, it does not mean that you can't get the blessings. You can't get the benefits. Don't worry about the anointing. If you're a child of God, tell them, say, I just want everything God got for me. You ain't got to give me nothing special. But I want what's mine. I want the joy. I want the peace of salvation. I want God's love. I want his provision. I want his provision every day. I want what God got for me. Tell somebody, I want what God got for me. I don't fast like you fast, but I still want what God got for me. I don't read my Bible like you read it, but I still want what God got for me. I don't understand it like you understand it, but I still want what God got for me. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Tell somebody, God got something for you. Whether you're in the midst of the battle or not, because you are on his side, because you are a child of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. God got a blessing with your name. Hallelujah, somebody.
Never say where you will not get caught. Hallelujah, somebody. And in all of this that David went through, he did not know, even though he was anointed, he was a great captain of the army, he was a general in the army, he had slew Goliath and so many other soldiers against the children of Israel, he was not ready. He wasn't ready to be king of Israel. Did not have enough compassion. He did not have enough of seeking God for the people. See, this time David just sought God not just for himself, but he was seeking God for the people. When God saw that David's heart has changed, not only was he concerned about the things that he was concerned about, he was concerned about those who did not have. You can't be a child of God and don't be concerned about the poor. You can't be a child of God and the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. You can't be a child of God and you so anointed you can't bear nobody else's weakness. We got too many folk that's really too holy for greater new hope. Ask me what you mean by that? You so holy, all you can see is everything that's unholy in everybody else. You too holy for this church. You need to find you a church. You need to find you a church. Let me see the the righteous of the righteous church. Where everybody in there is righteous. Everybody in there living holy. Everybody in there got the right love. Everybody, you don't tell me where it is because I never attended. But you cannot find a church in the Bible In the New Testament That everybody in it was right You can find the church of Thessalonians Where there was not an evil report on them But there were things in every church That was wrong Hallelujah And just because you find a church Where there's a lot of people wrong That's in position that shouldn't be there You better wait Wait before you leave. I can't go there because the pastor he did it. I can't go to that deacon. That's somebody. You better wait. You better slow your roll. But this may be the church you need to be in. Because when we get it right, we'll be able to break some off to you. Y'all miss me on that. For those of you who are looking for a perfect church, and for everybody to sing on the right note, you are not going to find it here. Say glory, somebody. You will find people in position of authority that are not really living holy and don't have a mind to. Say glory, somebody. Don't let them run you away from the church. If the word is good, hallelujah, somebody. If it's anointed and powerful, you need to wait. Because this word is going to mold you and make you to what God wants you to be. That person ain't living nothing, can't do nothing for you but help you to live up a little better. Hallelujah. If you want to recover, if you want to recover what the enemy stole from you, you got to have a talk with Jesus. You got to tell him all about your trouble. You got to tell God about your burdens. And he is a burden bearer. A heavy load sheriff. He is, he is that that I am. He said, I am that that I am. Don't think that you're so weak that God can't help you. God did not give David a routine. Okay, David, I want you to pray on every odd hour for two days. And then I want you to pray every 30 minutes. No. When I gave my life to Christ, one prayer. He said, one prayer. One truly repentant heart. One prayer, let me say one prayer. One truly repented heart was all it took for God to receive me. Put your hands together, give God a It didn't take a bunch of Hail Marys. I did not have to read a book. My mind was made up. 
that I wanted to try Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And I wasn't trying him because it was something that I needed him to do. Not in the natural world. Because I had everything set. So there was nothing in the natural world that I needed God to do. But there was something in the spiritual realm that God needed to do for me. It has not been an easy journey. But God has been with me. Every step of the way. Ask my, is he with you? Is he with me? Rod and the staff that come for me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. One sincere prayer. Hallelujah. God is looking for somebody with a contrite and a broken spirit. Hallelujah. You can't get yourself right. Psychiatrists can't help you get where you need to be. To go back with Jesus when he comes. You need Jesus. You need his touch. And you need his ear. And from that time forward, God began to turn things around for David. If you're looking for a turn around in your life, it starts with giving your life to Christ. Repenting of your sins. Hallelujah. And God will give you a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. Well, if don't nobody go to church, you want to go. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. If don't nobody want to work in the church, you want to work. Yeah. You'll make your own assignments up. If you can't do it in the church, you'll do it at home. Yeah. you do it over the internet. internet. Yeah. Because ministry is calling. Deep is calling for deep. Yeah. It starts with a repentant heart. In the confession that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Stand with me today. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And David. Recognizing Ziglag yeah. that God is still for me. Yeah. Even when I did not know it, I could not feel him. I had not wrote a song about him. I have not played an instrument over a year on behalf of God. I haven't been to church in a while. But I used to be active in church all the time. Yeah. I've strayed away. But I found out he's still with me. Thank you, Jesus. It's amazing your grace. Hallelujah. How you save to the utmost. How you can deliver. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus today as Lord and Savior, thank you. All of the obstacles you've had in life, all of my trials and tribulations before I met Jesus, in and out of jail, shooting at folk and getting shot at. You know, I really was thinking I was dodging bullets, but you really can't dodge it. My mind said, it's about to shoot. I dug you, you really can't. Because if it got your name on it, when you hit low, the bullets going low. He was preparing me. Through your experience, God has prepared you to be a light bearer. Look at that song. You provide the fire. I'll provide 
the sacrifice. There's a fire here today that says that God wants to save you to the utmost. He wants to purify your heart. You provide. You provide the fire. dedicated 
his life to the Lord. Amen. And in rededication is not just a Sunday. It's for the rest of my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say to you that as you seek the Lord, he will pursue you. If you do not seek the Lord, he will not pursue you. He will be standing in the place where he is in your life today. And he said, you come unto me. He's looking for God chasers. He's looking for a God chaser. One who is going to study his word. Who is going to apply your life based upon the scripture. Not based upon what's popular. You young men who are still in school, is that right? Both of you are out of school? Look younger than your birthday. That's even better. Hallelujah. God want to use you for his service. How many know that? Who think God don't want to use them? Who in here think God don't want to use them? God want to use you. He want to get the glory out of your life. Amen. How, old are, how old are you guys? 20? 20 and 22. Thank the Lord. Sir. Oh, how my mind goes back. Oh, how my mind goes back. At your age, I was hungry and thirsty for the Lord. Hallelujah. I was home with Thursday. Left all my so-called friends for one friend in Jesus. I gave up the world. When you give up the world, when you give up all the things that's against God's word and against God's will in your life, he will keep you. You got to keep your mind staying on him. For that's the way you will obtain peace. I want to anoint you with oil and I want to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Those are two brothers. You can be the strength of each other. What a wonderful age to rededicate your life to the world. This is the age group that we need so that the gospel is carried to the next generation. Purge their hearts, their minds, and their spirits. Let them know, God, that they can and will be used by you. In the name of Jesus, cause them to hunger and thirst after your will and seek the divine purpose. They may be frontline soldiers for you. Or they may be those that's left at the rear, keeping them with the supplies, making sure things are going well. They may be out front workers, but then they may be behind the scene, working on behalf of your kingdom. You will get the glory out of their life. Allow me, God, to witness their progress and give you glory for the things you have done in their life. Give them of their sins and trespasses. These are young men who have been in church all their life. Hallelujah, God. But now at this age, hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. You're calling them to a higher purpose. Sanctify them right now. Let them know that they are supposed to be different. The way they think, the way they act, the way they talk. Purge them with hyssop that they may be clean. Wash them that they may be white and smooth. Hallelujah. Save them to the utmost. Deliver them from every trial and tribulation. Every snare of the devil, make them aware of it. Lift your hands right now. Both of you lift your hands and give God some praise. Tell them.
in the real church. Y'all driving, right? Yeah. I want you here Tuesday night, amen, in the, in the real church because we have a, a special meeting uh, for those in your age bracket. And we have a lot of, well, those who's coming on Tuesday night, some of you come, y'all stand up, y'all stand up. Hallelujah. Those that's coming on Tuesday night. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, Amen. And so these are people, peers that's in your mindset. You're blessed to have people in your age bracket that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. You don't have to be hungry and thirsty by yourself. There are people that you can break off and, and they can impart to you and you can impart to them your history in the church. In your history in the church, you got something to offer people who haven't spent the time in church that you have. You're full of the knowledge of God now. You just know how to break it out. But when you spend time around the fire of God, around the word of God, get you a daily devotional. Do y'all have a daily devotional? Do you have something you can read every day? Do you have something you have a daily devotional that you can read every day? With some scriptures pertaining to the work in the power of God, the life of Jesus. You're going to need this. God said, I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. You have what you need. Now, one plant is another water, but God gives the increase. And we believe God will be increased. Somebody come and give them a hug of love. Some new men come and greet them and give them a hug of love. Come on, give us a hug of love. Amen. Amen. Amen.
all of them look like they're ready to tear something up. So the closest one to you, the closest one respond. Amen, amen, amen. The closest one respond. Your brother Stencil, he look like he ready to tear something up. I just want the ushers now, when, you, when the ushers, when you stand, I, I want you to be like a sister Glory, but sister Glory gonna say, She's going to do it real gracefully and real slowly. Now, I got some that's going to be like, uh, what a name? Uh, 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 uh. You know, like, nay, nay, you know. Please, ushers, just be gracefully. Don't exaggerate. Don't be... Cause you're gonna have a whole church party. And I appreciate uh, 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 Brother Steve Handy and uh, uh, Sister uh, Deaconess Sanders, and Brother Jerry working with the Usher Board. And we have more men want to be a part of the Usher Board. And we need more men in that position. And so well, I, want, I want to tell you, parents, stop your children from doing so much walking. Watching my grandson, I seen him go out and twice and go back and go trying to figure out where you going. <laughs> he going at his mama. And I see other kids, huh? All of them. <laughs> I want y'all to stay in church. Treat the church like you do school, ladies. You don't go to the bathroom in school. Y'all very seldom go to the restroom in school. How are you? Teenagers, how many y'all going to the bathroom in school? Huh? They ain't going to use the bathroom. Thank the Lord. I, I know what I've experienced with, with, uh, with, with, with Richard Needle. She wasn't going to have any hit me, baby. You're my daughter. You're just a part of the conversation. Deal with it. <laughs> Home from school, first thing she do, busting in, going to the bathroom. I said, Where you been? I gotta use the bathroom. I don't use that bathroom at school. Oh, yeah. Have that attitude. See, it, it costs you when you related to the past. Your name will come up in my conversation. I can't hear who you are, and you can't hear who I am. We in this thing together. I love all of you. We are blessed today. Amen. And God is doing great things, and I'm glad about it. I'm excited about what God is doing. As I said earlier when we came to David, God did not talk to them, but he talked to David about going pursuit. And we're pursuing another level at the greater new hope. God has talked to me, and if I'm your leader, then I expect you to follow. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And, 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 and belief is something funny. Because all of Jesus' uh, brothers did not believe on him until after he was risen. They was a part of the criticism and saying, well, I don't know what's wrong with my brother. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know what happened to him. They was a part of the criticism. But afterwards, amen. And I, don't, I want you to be a part of what we're doing now and not waiting to afterwards. If I am your pastor now, amen, then I need you to give and to support now. Uh, uh, we, we don't prophesize based upon well when we see something then I'll know because that never happens that never happens I, I had someone to tell me at one time said I'm not giving my tithe after the cold because the Bible said bring all your tithe and offer it to the church <laughs> still waiting on it <laughs> so don't wait to give don't wait to be a blessing Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And God has blessed you with a little extra. You want to give a little extra because we don't need extra. Uh, we got the price that we need for the building. And, and, uh, but, but we need furniture. We need some other stuff. Amen. So we're not just trying to do something for once. It's a continuation. Amen. Everything I have belongs to God. Because when I didn't have a penny, amen, and I was broke, my brokenness belonged to God. Right. So how God has blessed me, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it no song. And all you got to do, all I need this house to do is be faithful in your tithe and in your offering and give. I know that there are many of you who are blessing other churches, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. 
and I know that you are blessing other people. I don't have a problem with that. But the type belongs to the house of God. Amen. amen. God has not given any man uh, authority, amen, according to the scriptures, amen, of what to do with the type other than bring it into the storehouse. Amen. If you're going to remember a house, remember your own house. So why are you buying a loaf of bread for somebody else's house when the children in your house are home? Amen. Remember your house. Remember your house. Amen. Well, we're breaking off the word of God to you. And we're blessed of the Lord. We're going to ask the deacons that they will come at this time. Amen. We're so blessed to have all our business. If you're business today, hold your hand up. We want to acknowledge you. God bless you. We thank God for you. We thank God. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Holmes all the way from New York being with us today. Pastor, we thank God for you having a day you would like to say to the concert today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to be home. Yeah. From Connecticut, I call this my home as well. We thank God for his base of mercy. Yeah. The bishop, yeah. first lady, the ministerial staff, the members of the Benjamin Home. It is good to be here. Watch, watch y'all on YouTube. Being here is good. Being alive is good. I can just leave you just one word today if I leave. The Lord has put in my heart to tell somebody this afternoon that don't get weary on this journey. There's a joy set before you. You have you want to get to it, but there's obstacles before you get there. You're going to have to fight through the obstacles to get to the glory that God has for you. But God is saying this morning, He's going to give you the strength to overcome every obstacle that inhibits you to get to the glory that he has for you. Amen. Don't get weary. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. If you tell God yes, like he did to the angels will come give you the strength. So say yes to God this morning. This is preacher. Say yes to God. Lord, I want everything you have for me. I want to get it. I want to go through everything I have to go through to get it. And God will bless you. Pray for me. I'm here. This is my brother. He's uh, having some health challenges. I've been here for two weeks already. Going home on Wednesday. I'll be back again hopefully in July. So I will see you again next go around. Bishop, thank you for the opportunity to say words to you people. Thank you, Lord. We want you to be ready to this time. We'll serve the overflow section in this time. We'll do it again. Overflow section.
just want to praise you forever.